the world around you, um, you know, is not all hunky-dory. It's not all roses. And uh, I, I think that there are many male artists in the past who have painted wars and uh, you know difficult circumstances. And I, I take that permission to paint the world around me. And I have to do it from a personal point of view because otherwise it wouldn't have any truth in it. sort of evokes, like when I first came in here, I thought it was a bit like a, a village hall. And I imagined a sort of a piano in the corner with a vase of flowers on top. And then I sort of have always wanted to place all of these people, regardless of their status, whether they're my mum or somebody uh, unknown that I've for some reason connected with an image or a actor or a model or something. If you place them all in a country house setting, that you're sort of, um, it's nice to make all these people equal in this sort of grand idea. And I think the colour sort of evokes that slightly, but then I think it's a, quite a church-like room and also quite like a play school, like there's something very childlike, like a, a classroom full of amazing paintings by four-year-olds, the way that they, they paint so freely and uh, what things that are on their mind and, uh, you know, your mum and... Superman, Spider-Man, you know, and I think it's a bit like that as well, so But hopefully people will feel their own idea what it, what it feels like um. The big paintings are sometimes uh, easier in a way to give everything you've got because they're bigger than you so it's already heightened reality because this person isn't this big so there's something very it's a they're, they're, it's quite um uh, you can throw yourself into it a bit more or get lost a bit in it more whereas if you're making a piece this big the, the whole world is still around you Early on, I think, as a young teenager, I was very aware of Pollock, sort of almost before Warhol. Um, and I think that when you experience work and you sort of, you gradually in your life, you realise what you're sort of allowed to do because you've seen someone else do it sort of thing. So you sort of, oh, right. So, and you realise that there's a lot of emotion in these drips. And as a painter, like most people, Paint, people who are painters realise that the, you know, the, the, the one of the parts of painting is drip is a dripping kind of thing. It depends on how thick your paint is. So it could be incredibly watery. It could be so thick that you slap it on with a knife and it won't fall off. I just realised I could tell very subtle stories and secrets in the drips, and it could just be one drip that looks like an accident. And it may well have been an accident to start with, but you'll see in some of them I've actually painted around them. And so sometimes when I change my colours several times, I still paint around that drip. They started, um, my mum died in August 2003. And um, I think the Dianas are from September, October 2003. Um, so, hi Paul was just after mum died. There's a tiny one of Tracy Emin from around about that period. And then, 
Uh, Snow White was the winter of 2003. Snow White in the forest, the lodge, with the, with the masons all sitting around. Quite a dark painting, the Masonic Lodge, but I also used to work in a place called the Director's Lodge. So there's a sort of a strange thing going on there. And it's also part of the Diana conspiracy sort of theories of the Masons and the Illuminati and of the Pope and everything. And then when Saatchi bought my work in 2004, in January, and then it was shown in February on the river in the Thames, um, in the south, on the south bank. And then I just really started flying, you know, just really started working. And sort of 2004 and then 2005, I just, just couldn't really stop painting. Uh, there's a lot of paintings from 2005. In 2006, I was just really completely burnt out. Um, just absolutely exhausted and a bit lost. Um, I really sort of just collapsed. And then Andrew came and offered the show. And um, it was great that he, he suggested that we actually try and get everything back, or as much as we could to get hold of back, um, and show it because it had never been seen before. I've certainly never seen it altogether. And I've not seen a lot of pieces, you know, again since. Um, so, uh, I wasn't sure how big things were or, you know, how I'd feel about them, if they'd be any good, you know, uh, so, but I, I feel, I feel quite, you know, pleased that it, it all works well. It's lovely to see some of them again. I used to make a lot of houses in the garden and they were always incredibly ambitious, you know, they, they were houses with extensions, with extensions, with extensions, so, and I think you don't, you don't sit, sort of sit there thinking, um, or oh, I can only do this. You just keep going, don't you? And you just sort of... And I think if someone said, here's a 40-foot canvas, Stella, can you do a painting? You've only got a day. I'd go, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, all right. 